interesting because we have a lot of things that we could have done attacking wise and defensively, right? So now let's watch at the attacking side of it. So now Lily has the ball in here, she's on a 1v1 with the uh, outside back, right? She beats the outside back, no problem, right? Now look where Mari was. Mari was supporting here instead of making a deeper run. So now here's the first thing that you gotta that we gotta see and we gotta understand, right? If it's a moment to attack, because initially look where the ball was. When the ball got played to Lilia, right? She's running out into that ball. And now my striker is shifting, right? So now look at the gap. Look at the gap right now. As my striker is shifting. Look at the gap right now that my striker has to run. Right now, the run is not there yet because the winger hasn't even got to the ball, right? But as the winger gets to the ball and she pauses, now the moment she pauses, now my striker recognizes space because she paused. That's a great. That's fantastic, actually. But the thing that my striker has to recognize is, is my attacking mid coming there. If my attacking mid has a space there, I have to take the next space available, right? Now look at these guys. These guys are not aware of where she's at right now. So instead of me supporting here and not having any attacking options, right? So the moment she gets the ball, look how this guy is marking. This guy is marking the middle and I'm marking the space. So I need my striker to recognize what the defender's marking and then start making a run there. But if that happens, then that pass could have been played no problem, right? But watch what happens in the play. So we take him on. Right? And now what? We take him on again. And now look, my striker came in. That's fine. That's a good run. But if my striker comes in, my attacking midi cannot be behind the play anymore because my striker right now becomes the attacking midi. So now my attacking midi has to take that space or my second striker has to take this space. Right? So it's easier for my attacking midi to take that space because they're, they're actually closer. So now look where the ball goes. The goal, ball goes in the space where the attacking midi should have been. Right, and that one would have been a 2v1 situation, right? So that's the first position inside in the attacking part. Now we lose the ball, attacking midi gets it, right? So now look what happens right now. This is interesting because we have one, two, three, four, five players against one, two, three, right? It's a 3v5. Right now, do we have the advantage to go forward? That's the first question we ask. If we don't have the advantage to go forward, what my attacking mid there was good. Now, notice the movement of my striker, right? So that, was, that was well done by Mari. The striker's coming in. She's not moving forward anymore. She's stepping in there just to support Kali, which was a good play. So now Kali plays that ball in between towards the winger. It's not a bad ball, right? But instead, look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players in there. Instead of me playing that ball in there and selling the ball, can we play it here, right? To my hold the mid and we keep possession of the ball. Now, that's not a bad ball because Ali gets there anyways, which is good. So we force the play, she gets there, 1v1. One one. Now look how far up we are up the field, but our numbers are really 1, 2, and 3, right? Because Lily is right behind. So we got 4 before right now. But we have them where we want them, right? In their half. So instead, in here, look where Natalie. We're jogging in there. So Natalie, if Natalie gets here in quicker, now she's in between the three players, right? So now she gets that ball, and now look where the space is right now for Natalie. She takes a touch forward, which is not a bad play, but look at the space that she has behind her. If she takes the ball behind, and then she plays Maura, and then Maura plays Lilia, we would have been attacking, okay, We're in a better position, facing the goal. So then we take a touch in, we cross the ball, and now here, the moment Natalie takes the touch in, I want you to see Maura's positioning. I want you to see the importance of this, right? And this is how we're not reading the game. Look where Maura is. The moment Natalie takes the touch in, look how she's standing, right? We're standing in there, and we're not figuring out where the options, okay, the, the, their attacking options are. So the moment Natalie gets that ball, look how Mara is still standing still. Natalie gets that ball, there's no way she's going to go back. She's gonna, as, she, as she takes the touch forward, I need Maura right now coming into this space to cover this ball or this ball, okay? Instead... Look what happened. Natalie crosses the ball and Mara look. Mara is still walking, right? And all she's, all she's looking is the play. All my uh, outside back is looking is the play, right? My outside back should be pinching in because the ball is going to the opposite side. My holding mid should be pinching in since the other holding me is there. So that ball is never going to go in the space. If the ball comes back in the space, that's where I have my center, my outside back pinched in. Now I need my holding mid to come in and cover. Look, the ball is going this way. I need my holding more central. So now watch. We lost the ball there, and look who the ball comes to. 
and now it's too late, right? It's too late for my holding me now to recover because she already has the ball. So watch, instead the ball gets played, so this over here wouldn't have happened if we, we were aware. And I look at my outside back, now it's running into the middle, okay? Because we were standing there watching the play. Ball comes in the middle and look, this girl receives the ball by herself, right? My outside back is out, this guy is out, and she's too far back from the defender. If that's the case, my center back should be closer in that play, right? No giving any space. Then she turns, and now a good defensive battle right now by my outside back that comes in, so one step, okay? So now if the center back doesn't step, one of my outside back has to step, whoever's close. So now, Anna is battling that one, she delays the play, and now this play is important, right? Anna delays the play, now Emily has an advantage. I know this girl is quick, but she has an advantage. In this play, notice how Emily slows down, and that's when we lose the ball. In this one, Emily should be getting there and play the ball as quick as she can to Grace. And we would have been out of that problem. Instead, right, she slows down a little and the girl wins the battle. Now she crosses it in, and Mara gets there, but now we're too late positioning. And that's how the goal came about. So it's interesting how we came from an attacking position to a defensive position and we're not ready and that's what the goal happened. Again, I want you to see it again, right? Um, Mara steps too late, ball gets played in, now they're turning, and steps delays the play. So now in this one, Mari is facing the whole play, Emily's backing up in that one. The moment she takes a bad touch, right there, see how Emily's gonna start. Emily's gonna slow down to body her, but she has to get there as quick and then play it to Grace. Instead, look, we go for the body, she beats us to the race, she crosses it in, Mara is there. So now instead of mounting that one, kicking the ball there, we should kick it out of bounds. Right in that one, if we're in that much trouble and it's a 2v2, just kick it out of bounds and then we we'll give the corner kick instead. Instead, we keep the ball alive and now we don't get there in time and it's a goal.